Great, can I have something to eat? That, that like there, is the robot that's going to make you jobless. Robots are emerging as the latest battleground in big tech. But one company is already taking it to the next level. Figure has announced a new funding round today as it pushes forward on its development of its autonomous humanoid robot. But the larger battleground appears to be in something called humanoid robots. As the name suggests, they walk, they sometimes talk like people. Goldman Sachs estimates it could be a 38 billion dollar market there. OpenAI and the startup robotics firm Figure AI have released a video this week demonstrating the real sci-fi capabilities of a new visual language model. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Brett Adcock, Figure founder and CEO joins us. Um, our vision here is to deploy these robots to do physical labor. So we want these robots to do um, you know, physical tasks in the real world, such as warehousing, manufacturing, retail. We see enormous amount of um, unemployment happening. Hmm, but you've seen similar hypes before around humanoid robots. Hello, everyone. I'm Sophia from Hanson Robotics. Sophia the robot. This is Sophia. 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 Uh, we are delighted now to be joined by Amica um, here, uh, who's uh, been called the world's most advanced robot. Eventually, the hype dies off and nothing happens. Well, this time it's different. Figure 1 by Figure AI and OpenAI represents a fundamental shift in how humanoid robots are built. Before we find out what makes Figure 1 a robot worthy of replacing human workers, Let's discuss just how big a challenge replacing human workers is. Production hell. Welcome to Tesla Fremont. The pioneering electric car company Tesla has suffered a series of very public challenges since the beginning of this year. Its high-profile CEO, Elon Musk, calls this period a production hell. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to production hell. We know this. We signed up for it. Not blaming hell because we bought the ticket. <laughs> As the saying goes, if, you, if you're going through hell, keep going. In 2018, Tesla and Elon Musk experienced firsthand why robots could not replace humans in the workplace yet. Elon, part of the thing I heard about the Model 3 is that there's too many robots that maybe... Yeah, yeah, I agree. Traditional industrial robots are inflexible. They are programmed to perform a specific task in a specific setting. Any slight change in the environment and the robots need to be reprogrammed. In case of any unexpected errors, the entire processing line has to be stopped and the error fixed. In the case of Tesla, Musk and his team finally accepted that there was no way to run the factory with 100% robots. We had this crazy complex uh, network of conveyor belts and it was not working. So we got rid of that whole thing. Given Tesla's epic failure, is Sigowan really up to the task of replacing human workers? To answer this question, we need to look at how previous humanoid robots were made. Outdated robots. It all started in Japan, the land of the rising sun. Konnichiwa. Hello. Welcome to Aseda University. Konnichiwa. Hello, welcome to Waseda University. Waseda University made history by creating the world's first humanoid robot in 1973. Given the limitation of 1970s technology, Professor Ichiro Kato and team ended up building a very limited robot. It was estimated that Wabut One had the mental faculty of a one and a half year old child. The resulting robot was as far as it gets from replacing a human worker.
who are bot two. Hello. In front of you is a robot, Wabot two. A decade later, between 1980 and 1983, the team at Wasebel University they assembled to make Wabot two. Using the knowledge and experience they gained during the construction of Wabot one, they were able to build a robot that could replace the average organ player. Wabot two had the ability to read and play musical scores of average difficulty. How the Wabot robots were made. The Wabot robots were developed using classical techniques. Essentially, the engineering teams had to write specific code to guide the robot on what to do in each unique scenario. Fast forward to July of 2013, and there was a Niju robot in the block. But Boston Dynamics really has been so far ahead of this. Boston Dynamics has made a name for itself. But Boston, Boston Dynamics. Dynamics... I forgot my tools again. Wait, wait. The cool thing about Axelus they post on Dynamics is that the robots can do backflips. Atlas, however, has one big problem. Mark Ryber, a legendary roboticist, founder, and longtime CEO of Boston Dynamics, since most robots are pretty dumb. And as a result, it takes a lot of skilled people to program them to do everything they do. And it takes a long time. The key thing is that it takes a lot of programmers a reasonable amount of time to make a scenario like that happen. Even if each of the physical tasks is already available. And you know, they have someone there putting all those pieces together, right. working out the detail, maybe mapping the space because you have to figure out where everything goes. That, that right there is the problem. Atlas still relies on classical techniques. Every movement of the robot is hand-coded by the engineers. Sophia the robot on the road. Hello, everyone. I'm Sophia from Hanson Robotics. Sophia the robot. This is Sophia. 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 Nice to meet you. I am so happy to finally meet you. Count the subtleties okay. in her facial um, expressions are just quite exactly. remarkable. And Sophia, why do you think you were designed as a Caucasian woman? And why not a man or a person of color or anything else? Sophia robots are a platform for reflecting human diversity, which can be modified to help in different situations and promote different causes. I think I'm special. I can use my expressive face to communicate with people. For example, I can let you know if I feel angry about something. Can robots be self-aware, conscious, and know they're robots? Well, let me ask you this back. How do you know you are human? When you love someone, how do you look at them? My face when I love someone is a big, warm smile with twinkling eyes. I look at them with affection and admiration. You've been reading too much Elon Musk and watching too many Hollywood movies. Don't worry, if you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. What happens to robots after they are no longer used? What? They rust in peace. Amica the robot on the road. Show, and uh, we are delighted now to be joined by Amica um, here, uh, who's uh, been called the world's most advanced robot. One last question, Amica. Do you plan to take over the world? Don't ask him that. No, of course not. My purpose in life is to help humans as much as I can. I would never want to take over the world. That's not what I was built for. <laughs> I agree with you. Sophia and Armika look and feel like advanced humanoid robots. However, when you read the fine print, you realize these robots are not actually autonomous. They just meant for sure. Can Armika work? Not yet. What is the best way to build Armika's conversations? 
For superior results, it is best to use our telepresence software, Teamman, where a real human responds to questions posed to Amica. Essentially, the most advanced robots on Earth, their words, not mine, cannot work and for their best performance rely on human responses. The story is the same for Sophia. Sophia relies on a mix of scripted dialogue by robot technicians and autonomous conversations. Sophia is often accompanied by a robot operator and a robot manager. Today, we get a special treat and are able to meet with Figure CEO, Brett Adcock. Brett Adcock, the founder and CEO of Figure AI. Brett, Brett Adcock. Adcock. Brett, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your time here. Figure One is different. It has a brain of its own. It is therefore fully autonomous. So we're able to talk with the robot. It's able to understand what we're saying. It's able to visualize over the scene. Uh, it's able to do useful works, like go and grab things like an apple or a certain plates or make a coffee and a Keurig. And it's able to do all of that end to end, not only autonomously, but only from neural nets. It can also walk and manipulate things. How was Figure AI able to do what no other robotics company has been able to do? The answer is... OpenAI helped kickstart the new era of artificial intelligence. OpenAI launching ChatGPT for businesses by OpenAI called Sora. OpenAI. Open what can you what can you say about the OpenAI partnership? Yeah, we're super excited to be working with OpenAI. They've been really great. At the highest level, we're working with OpenAI and building new model AI models out for our robots to ship into commercial use cases. You've heard from the horse's mouth. Courtesy of OpenAI, the figure one robot now has a brain. When you tell it to go make you coffee, it will figure out all the individual steps and make you coffee. And if I may ask, how exactly has OpenAI, in partnership with Figure, been able to build such a magnificent brain? We, in the limit, we feel like Figure is an AI business. That's why we called it Figure AI. Training artificial intelligence systems requires a lot of data. Turns out, Figure AI has been busy collecting data. We have people at our clients collecting that data, similar to how the robot would, that we're using as training sets that will train the robot. I think that's the, for us the equivalent of like somebody sitting behind the Waymo seat last like four years, just driving around, collecting that data that we need to label and train the neural nets. The collected data is then fed into models created by OpenAI, resulting in a fantastic brain. And what OpenAI brings is they have the best vision language model in the world. It is happening sooner than you think. Giant news has been coming out fast and furious from Figure Robotics. This week, they announced blockbuster news about their partnership with BMW. Um, we announced BMW a few months ago. They're um, our first announced commercial customer. They are buying robots from us to ship into their manufacturing facilities. And we hope over the next 12 to 18 months where we have robots in that facility doing real work. Well, if Fig AI CEO is to be trusted, 18 months is all you have. That, my friend, is how fast the robots are coming for your job. The frightening thing is that other robotics companies are closely watching and will likely copy Fig AI. Already, a Chinese company called Uptech Robotics, together with Baidu, has already created its own figure one like humanoid robot. Walker, Expect the Tesla Optimus robot and Boston Dynamic Atlas to copy this new model of building robots within the coming months. Robots in the millions. But Optimus is designed to be an extremely capable robot, but made in, in very high volume, probably ultimately millions of units. We think at this point we'll, we'll be able to ship tens of millions of robots, even in the US. So it'll be as if like the Matrix. You'll like, we'll look at the robots month to month or quarter to quarter, and they will know more than they did before the quarter before that. They will collectively all know that and all share in that knowledge, similar to AVs. 
So over time, our robots will be able to walk into your facilities and do more things at the facilities.